don't marry for money, right? Divorce for money. And that's really um, my advice. I don't care about money. I want a sensitive man, right? I want a man who will cry when I hit him. I, I want very... Um... Number four. My parents are coming over tonight. Why don't you go out drinking with your buddies? Things you never hear your wife say to you. Number three. Every time I see you wearing those tatty old underpants, I can't wait to jump your bones. My husband loves his car so much it makes noises only he can hear. We'll be driving along and he'll say, there. There's the rattle. You hear it? And I don't hear it. I want to hear it. I try to hear it. Once I lied and said I heard it. He said, no, that's not it. Number two. <coughs> Flick through all the TV channels again. It's so soothing. <laughs> and finally, our list of things you'll never hear your wife say to you. This is number one. I'm sorry, you're right. But really, folks, if I want to give any advice to anybody starting a relationship, I would say be faithful. Most important thing. Because it adds the element of trust, which creates the bond, which gives you a shot at going the distance. I believe like Paul Newman. Paul Newman used to always say, why should I go out for hamburgers when I've got steak at home? Thank you very much. <laughs> but every now and then, wouldn't you just die for a burger? <laughs> just a big, fat, juicy burger, you know what I'm saying? Something you can really tear and just... Arr, 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 juice running down your... I I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Where do the new stars come from? Do they fall down from the skies? Do they grow on hilarious laugh trees? Do they breed like comedy flies? Do they make them in hilarious factories? Do they drop down from wacky outer space? No, we're always on the lookout for the next famous funny face. I like women, I, I watch women. Men watch women, we don't understand them. So we figure we better keep an eye on them. We spend a lot of our lives doing this, just walking down the street, hey, there's a couple of girls, what are they doing? I don't know. <laughs> Did you see that other girl? No, I missed her. <sighs> <sighs> Men, we always do that. <sighs> I don't know what it means, but it is one of our highest ratings. Men are pigs. My mom raised seven boys, called us pigs, you little pigs. You little red baboon butted monkey little pigs, that's what you are. All you do is poop and eat. That's all you do around here. Don't speak to me. You grunt like little pigs you are. That's how she figured all men should talk. It's very simple. It's effective. You're confused. You understand. I've always wanted to be one of those gospel singers. You know, like the kind you see on the PTL club? Because those guys are just happy no matter what. I think I saw him on the hill the other day. I think I saw him when I watched a German play. But when I opened up my voice to sing him praise, he ran away, ran away, far away. The first crucial step is having arranged to pick up your date and not to look like a complete idiot when she opens the door. You know what is the most baffling thing to me about racial violence is that oftentimes it's between minority groups. For instance, in the United States, Jews and blacks don't get along. And I think that's so stupid. We come from the same history. 2,000 years of persecution. We've just expressed our suffering differently as people. Blacks developed the blues. Jews complained. We just never thought of putting it to music. It's very similar. <laughs> You know, America and the white people are so scared of black teenagers, it's pathetic. I walk down the street and women grab hold of their mace and big 300 pound white guys start flexing, trying to, trying to scare me. I can't hurt anybody. I weigh 120 pounds soaking wet holding a brick. Okay. <laughs> Why is everybody scared? The other day I asked this white guy for the time, he gave me his watch. Ladies get a card, they love it. Guys, it's not the same, especially those really long romantic ones. We don't even finish them. No, we don't. 
And it doesn't matter. Ladies, you could be standing right there. As men, we all do the same thing. We open them in front of you, put on the fake smile, and get that little head bob to let you know we're finished. Hey. See, when it rains really hard, I like to run stop signs just to make cops get out of their car. <laughs> make them stand there in the rain in a big puddle? All right, you. You know why I stopped you? Yeah. You know why I ran the sign? You know, sooner or later, they're going to make a phone into a little chip, a little microchip. Everyone's just going to have it surgically implanted in their ear. Yeah, we're all going to have phones. Wherever you go, I got a call coming. I'll be right. One sec, I got a call. Oh, hi, Joe. How are you? What's up? Yeah. Oh, my other line. Got to put you on hold. Hey, Billy. How are you, Bill? Yeah, I'm talking to Joe right now. I'll put you on conference. Got to talk to each other. Yeah. How are you, guys? What's happening? Oh, hold on, guys. I'm getting the facts. One second. <laughs> They're with you when you're born, they're with you when you die. Sometimes you want to kill them, they'll make you laugh and cry. Your family. It's time for you to go to bed. No! No, 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 no! Again, this is completely wasted on children. Wouldn't it come way more handy today? I'm sorry, the bank cannot cash your check without proper ID. You're going to have to come back tomorrow. No! My wife and I just recently took our two children on a cross-country vacation. We drove from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1903, the Wright brothers invented the airplane. That was because in 1902, they drove across country with their families. You know, I remember as a child, my mother used to leave me, my brother, and my sister in the car while she ran into the grocery store real fast. If you did that to a poodle now, they would fry you on the six o'clock news. And I'll tell you something else. Now that I'm grown and have kids of my own, I understand why my mother didn't want to take three youngins in the grocery store. <laughs> I would rather take a beating with a brick stick than take kids in the grocery store. Remember lawn darts? <laughs> oh, we lost a lot of dumb kids on that one, didn't we, huh? Oh. Okay, you go stand down there. I'm gonna throw this dart. You can be goalie. <laughs> ah! Anything in my house could poke an eye out when I was a kid. I'd be passing pizza across the table. You're gonna take your brother's eye out with that slice. Now put your goggles on and go to bed. My parents gave my brother and I a chemistry set. <laughs> Mom, Joey put ammonium sulfate in my eye. <laughs> Tell him I said stop. <laughs> you boys go play with the wood burning kid. <laughs> Better yet, go outside, get on the mini bikes and shoot the BB guns. <laughs> We couldn't wear tight pants growing up in my family. You're not wearing those tight pants out, mister. Put your big pants on going outside with tight pants on. We're big pant people. Get up to your room, put your big pants on. The Lobermans are coming over. Your father doesn't wear tight pants. Your brother, oh, but I can't take, get that knife out of your hand. Coming towards your mother with a knife. You're gonna take my eye out with that thing. You know what I can't do now? I can't write any new jokes because all I do all day is try to make my daughter laugh. All my comedies for her, it's frightening. I'm losing my perspective on adult humor, really. I've written one new joke since I became a father. Here, is this funny? What do you think of this? Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi in the balcony. Uh, why do men like sports so much and argue with all the refs' calls? As if they needed any excuse to play with and talk about their balls. I went to a Canadian football league game and the two teams playing each other had the same nickname. They're the Rough Riders. <laughs> One was the Ottawa Rough Riders were playing the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. There's only eight teams in the whole league. 
Like, welcome aboard the league. You're the last team in. What do you want to call yourself? We want to be the Rough Riders. <laughs> well, that's a fine name, but we already have a team with that name. It could be anybody else. There's a million names to choose from. How about... Rough Riders! <laughs> All right, you can be the Rough Riders. We need the teams. What? <laughs> what colors you want? Green and white. <laughs> That's what the other Rough Riders are. Yeah. <laughs> same name, same team, same color. Rough Riders! Rough Riders! Rough Riders! Hey, anybody go water skiing? You ever do that? Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I didn't like it. A lot of work for like not that much fun, actually. <laughs> I had no idea how much work was involved. You got to put the big vest on, you got to get in the water, put your skis on, put your gloves on, grab the handle, straighten out that rope, brace yourself. You're like, okay, I'm ready, go. Boom, I'm down. <laughs> they got to pull the boat around. I got to locate my bathing suit. <laughs> like, I got it, I got it. <laughs> it was on the inside, I got it. It's all right. To say that cricket is a slow sport is an understatement. It's the only sport I know where it gets heroin addicts off the couch to change a channel. <laughs> oh, man. The hell was that? I don't know, but it was slow. Death, you wipe out, you're just floating there in that water waiting for your friends to come back and pick your ass up. You ever been, like, way out there? like this crap at all. My dad tried to trick me, because I was be I'd beg. I'd be like, Dad, please, can, you know, can I mm, take karate? He tried to trick me, because my sisters, you know, they were taking, this is true, they were taking aerobics. So he tried to trick me. He sent me to aerobics with them, and he tried to trick me and tell me it was karate. And then if I fell for that, if I went to the class and I believe, you know, I'm going to get into a fight after school with a kid, I'm like, you want to go with me? You want to, come on, let's go, let's do it. You know, the Greeks used to wrestle in the nude. Which they still would if you let them. I'm just saying. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? Wrestling bare naked? Wouldn't you be a little self-conscious? Like today, when you see guys wrestling, right? This is a very popular starting stance for the match. I bet this wasn't all that popular when everybody was just kind of dangling, you know? <laughs> Probably a lot more of this type of thing. I like violent sports. That's what I enjoy. Give me some football, give me some boxing. Hell, I even watch, I even watch hockey. Yeah, I'll watch it, because you can fight in hockey. Kick somebody's butt and get a five-minute penalty. What a bargain. Man, I'd be out there every game. Pow! And I'd be back in five minutes to whoop your ass in the... What does it mean to be Canadian? Do I have to eat weed and drink syrup all day? Do I have to make out with a beaver? Cause if I do, that's okay. But not a moose, no way. Hey. Wherever you go in this world of ours, you just have to say the name Canada, and people laugh. <laughs> oh, Canada. Our home and native land. True patriot love. And all our sons. Oh, Canada. Why is my mother's picture on your money? Well, you know, in Canada, your car breaks down on the highway, you leave it there, you go get some help, you come back, it's still there. <laughs> my car breaks down in Los Angeles. Okay. So. Uh, uh. All right, honey, get your stuff because we got about 60 seconds before the kids with the baggy pants get here. We look like Americans. We talk like Americans. But the big difference is we can point ourselves out on a map. Two countries on the entire continent, us and them. And we're very similar. I mean, we both have armies. 
We just didn't give ours guns or anything. With glowing hearts, we see thee rise. The true north, strong and free. Here comes the Canadian army with plastic knives and forks. <laughs> Flee the village. What do we have to be afraid of America for? We're bigger than they are, and we're on top. If we, if we were in prison, they'd be our bitch. Hey, Parlez pas français. Parce que je suis un imbécile cochon anglais. I walk into any government building because they always have a sign up that says, like, we would be happy to serve you in either English or French. And I always ask to be served in French. And then I stand there going, what? And then they start up in English, and I go, no, 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 the French, please. <laughs> ah, you can do that for hours, it's unbelievable. And it's my right as a Canadian citizen to do that. Toronto is no, it's no Montreal, I'll say that. You know what? You guys ever thought about separating? Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, put it to a vote. Probably wouldn't cause a problem. No. English Canada has a plan if Quebec separates. Oh, yeah. If Quebec separates, we're going to join you. <laughs> we're going to live... We're going to live in a great big country called Quebec. We're gonna put it to a vote, change the name back to Canada. And then we start all over again. My name is William Shatner, and I am Canadian. Oh, I'm the lumberjack, and I'm so gay. Sleeps all night, and I work all day. I cut down trees, I skip and jump. I like to press wildflowers. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. He likes to press wildflowers He puts on women's clothing And hangs around in bars The 2004 Olympic Summer Games Beginning August 13th on CBC Canada's own Olympic Network Louis Re weird they tell their stories and jokes bizarre you'll never see men as weird as they are to meet them halfway you'd have to go far three strange men three strange men i'm feeling good man i am feeling great i just had some cosmetic surgery done i had my chin removed and my ears enlarged <laughs> quit staring at my nose born with an elbow stuck to my face i used to do drugs I still do, but I used to too. Remember the kids in high school who used to have the train tracks on their teeth, those metal braces? I always used to want to run up to them, grab them by the back of the head, get a cabbage, and just make coleslaw on their face. The woman who cleans your teeth, what the hell is her problem? You could be brushing and flossing every day. It's never good enough for her. I open up a yogurt, and underneath the lid it said, please try again. They were having a contest I was unaware of. But I thought I might have opened the yogurt wrong. See the way your gums are bleeding? Oh yeah, I can see it. Maybe you can stop sticking those sharp metal things into them. I think a rotisserie is like a really morbid Ferris wheel for chickens. It's a very scary piece of machinery. We will take the chicken, impale it, and then rotate it. 
and I'll be damned if I'm not hungry. <laughs> because spinning chicken carcasses make my mouth water. Pumpkins are the only living organisms with triangle eyes. Wearing a turtleneck is like being strangled by a really weak guy. All damn day. Like if you wear a turtleneck and a backpack, it's like a weak midget trying to bring you down. I go to a psychiatrist now. She hates my guts. She says I suffer from delusions of sexual superiority. She just wants to do me. I tried this phone sex thing for the first time the other day. I got on the line to Flermunda there. She says to me, she says, hey fella, why don't you try taking your clothes off and getting a little more comfortable? So here I am with the phone in one hand. I'm as naked as a barn owl. And all of a sudden, some disgusting pig starts smashing and banging on the phone booth door there. You gotta eat. You gotta eat. If there's one thing in this life, you've gotta eat. And you've got to laugh, you've got to laugh. But don't laugh while you eat, or you might choke. Oh. Oh. Anybody like me? I love that greasy garbage food. Every kind of greasy piece of shit you can shove in your mouth when I'm there. <laughs> if I cut myself shaving, sausage gravy comes out. <laughs> That's why I always keep a little pile of biscuits next to the sink when I shave. I went to this Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet, and while the owner, he got pissed. I mean, he was rude, though. He'd come out every hour. <laughs> Son of a bitch still here. <laughs> Starbucks, that's a peculiar little corner of hell, don't know, isn't it? I go to Starbucks when I want to see what the world would be like if Hitler had won the war. Always giving you that fresh-faced Aryan efficiency and they're oh so insincere up with people's smile to go at their 1795 cafe latte. <laughs> Lord Jesus, that price, darling, a sponge bath must be coming too, is it? I used to live with uh, two of the guys. We used to cook two things. The first thing was called cheese thing. <laughs> and that was where you get something and you melt some cheese over it and the first one to guess what it is doesn't have to wash up. But that's obviously quite Mediterranean. The other one was, was less complex. It was just called Cheese Fantasy. And that's where you come in very drunk at about five in the morning, you know, and find an apple and just pretend there's some cheese on it. Hot dog with cheese and bacon. Yeah, not enough nitrates in a hot dog. Gotta put some bacon on top of there. Then for an extra dollar, they'll put chili on top of the whole thing. It's for people who don't give a shit anymore. Have you given up hope? Try this. That's a power meal, man. Chili dog with cheese and bacon. That's power food. That's the kind of food just marches right down your throat, you know? Like, follow me, boys. We're going to the heart. What is that, lettuce? Get the out of my way. Fact. There's as much fiber in one bowl of all bran as there is in a big field of carrots or a big ship full of bananas. Why can't they tell the truth for once? Fact, there's as much fiber in one bowl of all bran as there is in the toilet after eating a bowl of all bran. I had that curry chicken. It went through my colon like a Japanese bullet train. I wasn't at the table five minutes. Where's the bathroom? Way over there, huh? <sighs> Please, God, let me make it. Don't let me take a dump in the lobby. Oh, look at the line. They served all the curry at once. They shouldn't do that. They should stagger it. You could hear Indian music coming from the bathroom. Ah! What I vote for. Alexander Graham Bell. Margaret Thatcher, the
the Queen and the Union Jack. Their jokes will make you laugh, but the food will give you a heart attack. Oh. Comedy! Comedy! I'm ready. Uh. When I got off the plane, I went through customs. I didn't know any of yours. <laughs> went down to a local mirror shop. I said, I want to buy a mirror, you tall, blonde idiot. He said, I'm over here, sir. <laughs> These are new, new in the shops. Octopus skin shoes. Here, look. Black pepper. Mm -hmm. Black pepper, black pepper. Black pepper, fruit for the lady. Black pepper, black pepper, black pepper. Parmesan. Mm -hmm. Parmesan, 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 root lady, black pepper, parmesan, root lady, black pepper, parmesan. Not just jockeys, I think all small people should have to wear a number. <laughs> help me! Help me to help you! Can it be done? If you're the mute, I apologise. <laughs> I swear to God I do. So I went out on stage, there were 2,000 people, all from the Alzheimer's Disease Association. I told my first joke, went really well, big laugh, applause, I thought, great. I'll tell it again. <laughs> I used to hang out at the park. I used to go out at the park, be with my mates the squirrels. I don't know if you know it, squirrels, big dope heads. Yeah. You watch them in the park, you think they're nibbling on a nut. They're not, they're actually rolling a little joint, they're like, they're like that. <laughs> I love going to see gangster rap because they're so vicious. They just, they're no caring for anyone's feelings whatsoever. And they come on, they go, bop, bop, bop the motherfucker in the motherfucking head. Gonna stab the motherfucker till the motherfucker's dead. First I assassinate them, then I cremate them, then I take the ashes and evaporate them. And this goes on for an hour, an hour of nastiness. And at the end they walk off and they go, peace. And that's, that's the whole show. My wife is thinking of having a baby and I think to myself, all that crap, all that puke, all that screaming, not getting any sleep. It's not an environment to bring a baby into. <laughs> the latest thing I wanted to have, black boxes in cars. Yeah, they're going to put black boxes in cars. Now, I think it's a big good idea. We could, that would that reveal a lot, wouldn't it? Listen to those last few moments of conversation in the car before the accident. I think we'd find out a few little home truths, don't you? <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think it'd be like, hmm. Reduce speed now, well, I think I know when to apply my brakes and when to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, leave it to me, I'll tune their bloody radio... <laughs> <laughs> you do not fold a road map like that. Give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Dad, I want to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many beautiful people in the world today But for every beautiful person there are ten that are just okay And one who's ugly My family is so ugly <laughs> I just saw my sister. My sister's big boned. <laughs> Shut up, she can't help it. Her husband says after they make love, she rolls over and smokes a ham. It's amazing the guys that have no idea what they look like. They think, they, they think no matter what they look like, they should be going out with the hottest babes in the world. You know? Guy, I want to see a guy, he looks like he got hit in the face with a frying pan. <laughs> One of those Pekingese dog profiles. And he's cutting women up. Boy, she's a beast, huh? What a pig that one is. What a dog. It's like my friend Tom. He has no body. He's a tooth on a stick. He looks like a Pez dispenser. He's all tilted back. And he's fussy. He's fussy with women. He goes, ah, she's not my type. Not my type. Tom, your type. You ever look in a mirror? Your type is anybody you can get. That would be your type. I looked at my watch. It was a quarter to two. I looked at your face and I thought, hmm, she'll do. <laughs> the end. I hate when I get a bad haircut, too. That's the worst, huh? But what happens? You gotta sit there and watch it in the mirror. And what do you do? Nothing. You just sit there and watch it. 
son of a bitch, what's he doing? What? I'm right here, buddy, I can see this, you know? I, are you nuts? Is this bad? Halfway through the haircut, the guy just dropped his scissors and he said, F it. <laughs> you think I like looking like Rick Moranis and Walter Matthau had a baby? Get a ruler and measure this son of a bitch right here. Got a high forehead all of a sudden. Lately I've been walking around like this so people don't notice. <laughs> no, I'm not going bald, I'm just real optimistic about everything, yeah. Losing the hair off my head, getting some new hair right above my ass at the back. <laughs> what the hell kind of trade-off is that? When am I ever going to use this? <laughs> Unless I become a television repairman. My sister's one of these kids that had to wear the braces that would orbit her whole head. Do you remember that? <laughs> this is my sister. <laughs> Sitting at the dinner table my last two years in high school, same thing every night, didn't matter what night, every night for two years. This is my sister sitting directly across from me at the dinner table every night, two years. This is her. <laughs> Shut up. Pack of peas, please. I hate you. My wife calls me babe. Is it because I'm cute? No, I look like a talking pig. <laughs> I've put on a lot of weight. You won't believe this. I used to be seven pounds, three ounces. The Joey Falco diet plan. Just a regular moron who's too stupid to be diplomatic. Comes right on television and it's on the shirt. Hey, how you doing, folks? Thanks for tuning in. Hey, listen, my name's Joey Falco. If you're overweight, try my diet plan. It's called Stop Eating, You Fat Bastard. <laughs> Let me explain how it works. These are proteins, these are carbohydrates. Therefore, stop eating, you fat bastard. <laughs> now, you may be wondering, am I a fat bastard? Here are some scientific ways to tell. When you go to a buffet, do the waitresses put on riot hats? <laughs> do you find yourself short of breath after combing your hair? When you stand up to pee, you gotta move your chin out of the way. <laughs> Chances are you've let yourself go. Send 79 cents for my tape. It ain't video or audio. You know what it is? Scotch tape. Take a piece and put it over your mouth so the <laughs> ring things don't get in. Try it for 30 days. Contains material that some viewers may find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. I went to the doctor. I said, can you help me please? It hurts when I do this. He said, don't do that. We'd like to do a song that we originally wrote for the American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons. Well, let me give you a little advice to the guys in the audience. Uh, if you're in the doctor's office, you hear the gloves coming on, get the hell out of the office. <laughs> Nothing good is coming your way. <laughs> we praise the colorectal surgeon, misunderstood and much maligned, slaving away in the heart of darkness, working where the sun don't shine. I was totally naked in the doctor's office. Didn't even have socks on. That's how you know you're officially naked. <laughs> as soon as your socks come off, wow, holy cow. <laughs> I've been over with my hands on my knees. I'm like, gee, I wonder what happens next. Respect the colorectal surgeon. It's a calling few would crave. Lift up your hands and join us. Let's all do the finger wave. So then this doctor sticks his fingers <laughs> up my ass without even saying hello. When it comes to spreading joy, there are many techniques. Some spread joy to the world, and others just spread cheeks. Some may think the cardiologist is their best friend. But the colorectal surgeon knows he'll get you in the end. I assumed the classic horsey position, and I waited in this rather vulnerable posture 
for quite some time, me naked from the waist down alongside this nurse. It was awkward. At one point, I asked her to put her ear there and tell me if she could hear the ocean. <laughs> We had come to a lull in the conversation, and, and there's not a lot you're gonna wanna talk about. You're not gonna talk about weather. I predict a hurricane with high winds run for cover! Why be a colorectal surgeon? It's one of those mysterious things. Is it because in that profession, there are always openings? I had to get this thing called the sigmoidoscopy. They have something like this long. I'm not kidding, and the doctor goes, now, Robert, today I'm gonna stick this up your ass. I said, why, was I late with a bill? <laughs> he said, no, don't be alarmed, it's just to look around. For what, a parking space? <laughs> tell me what you're looking for and I'll tell you where it is. When I first met a colorectal surgeon, he did not quite understand. I said, hey, it's nice to meet you, but do you mind if we don't shake hands? It's a sigmoidoscope, a camera that despite its remarkable dimensions, he was going to somehow insert, not insert, ram, into me for the purpose of taking pictures of my colon. Ladies and gentlemen, I am 43 years old, never has anyone requested pictures of my colon. I asked him if he wanted wallet size or an eight by 10 glossy. He sailed right through medical school because he was a whiz But he never thought of psychology when he read passages A doctor he wanted to be for golf he loved to play But this is not quite what he meant by 18 holes a day He says this detects blood in your colon <laughs> If you use that I can make a prediction right now Made me lay down, Velcro my arms to my sides, turns me upside down, he starts feeding it in like I, I thought I was gonna turn around and see my cable guy there. It was just... <laughs> Said you might feel a little pressure. Yeah, on the roof of my mouth, get it out. Respect the colorectal surgeon here and now we'll raise a glass for the rectal surgeon like the rectum can tell a liquid from a gas. And as he began snapping picture after picture, I began screaming like I didn't think humanly possible, to which Nurse Ratchet had the nerve to say, you're scaring our other patients. <laughs> I've got the Chrysler building in me. <laughs> She's worried about other patients. I said, they should be scared. They should know about this. In fact, run, run. We praise the colorectal surgeon, misunderstood and much maligned, slaving away in the heart of darkness, working where the sun don't shine. It's a long, lonesome road through the lifetime of a comic. Crappy meals and lousy deals And rooms that smell like vomit You've got airplanes and clogged up drains And promoters will rob you blind But it's the only kind of life I choose for mine You know the airlines, they kind of treat you like cattle you know, you kind of turn up at the terminal and stuff, all the passengers are there going, meh, 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 meh. You know, and you join them, it's like, meh, 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 meh. And they call the flight, they go, wagon trail. All the passengers go, meh, 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 meh. Whenever I visit another city, I, I always act like I'm from there, you know, so the cab driver doesn't rip me off. I'm always like, yeah, it's good to be back home. Back here where I grew up. Yeah, here in Tokyo. <laughs> Everything looks familiar, because I grew up here. Oh, uh, where do I need to go, driver? Uh, I need to go to my old stomping grounds. Uh, that would be the Holiday Inn. <laughs> and the address appears to be the pound sign. <laughs> so, step on it. If you want to make my stay more pleasant at a hotel, why don't you start by removing that jet engine from the air conditioner, you know? <laughs> You ever try to sleep in a hotel with the air conditioner on high and say, like, Wake up the next morning, it's two degrees in your room. You got Walt Disney laying next to you. 
But because they fly all the time and we never fly, you're kind of, I'm like this. And they kind of walk up and they go, oh, yes. I know I am ugly. And you are beautiful. But please help us. No. Pop culture, pop culture, everywhere you go it's there. Some are on their way up, some are on their way down, and some folks just don't care. Is Britney Spears a virgin? Does Harrison Ford smoke dope? Are they gonna launch in sync into space to rendezvous with the Pope? One thing I like about the movies, I like the previews. Like the previews? The previews are the best, aren't they? It's always that guy with that deep voice. One man, one way. <laughs> One desire. Imagine that guy making love. Oh, yeah. Ah. The passion in your eyes burns with desire. The finest musicians of the world are asked to do the James Bond themes. And it's sad because there are so many other brilliant performers who've never had a chance. People like Neil Young. James Bond with your fancy women. Can't go to the movies with my girlfriend. She has to see every movie that comes out right away with her friends first. And if she likes it, she wants to see it again with me. Yeah, this sucks. Now every five seconds, she's got to lean over with those very useful instructions. Hey, hey, watch this part. <laughs> Sitting in a chair facing a tremendous screen. Hey, watch this part. Oh, okay. <laughs> she got mad at me. She gave me an elbow. I mean, really watch. Really watch. <laughs> REM. Hey, James Bond, you've got a gun. You shot me in the face. Ow, 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 that hurt. Look at Wonder Woman. Look at how she dresses. You know, those big ass red hooker boots. Blue underwear with stars and stuff all over. They always give women ridiculous weapons. One woman has a golden lasso that makes you tell the truth. Oof, not that. <laughs> the hell is that gonna do? She's gonna catch a bad guy. Gotcha. Oh, nice tits. <laughs> the great Bob Dylan. Coming in, you wanna run, you're coming at, he's got a gun. Didn't you? There was a satellite with a laser beam. Everybody run, everybody scream. Wouldn't you? Ugh. I was reading the LA Times the other day. So see where the grand jury investigating Michael Jackson still hasn't decided whether or not to indict. Now I'm thinking, look, make a choice or leave the man alone, because I feel sorry for Michael. I have ever since I saw that Oprah Winfrey interview where we found out he has that thing that causes black people to gradually lose their color. What's it called? Uh, money. My wife told me the other day that youngsters now are splitting their tongues down the middle. <laughs> That's a fad, eh? A fad. No, no. No, a bike with a banana seat and monkey bars is a fad. You split your tongue down the middle, in an untoo distant future, you're gonna be the scariest friggin' grandmother at the park, aren't you? <laughs> Careful on the swings, Jimmy. Let's say you're a guy and you're going bald. Every two channels, a cure. <laughs> There's a guy spraying hair out of a can. You seen this guy? This Ron Popeil guy, carrying on like he invented the light bulb, this guy. <laughs> It's amazing, it's unbelievable. And you're in front of the TV going, it's paint, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> you're painting your head, Thomas Edison. I could have thought of that. And he has the balls to look right into the camera and say, Shh, your girlfriend will never know that you sprayed this <laughs> all over your head. <laughs> and I'm always thinking, really? Well, then why buy it? You know, if your girlfriend is that much of a doorknob that she doesn't know, <laughs> you have suddenly Dutch boyed your skull black, save the money, you could fool her with anything. I mean, you could have antlers, she wouldn't catch on. See, your hair looks different today. It's the same hair I've always had. Stay on target, stay on target. Loosen up, stay on target. They're coming in too close. Shut down with the garbage station on the detention level. Free me 
go! Shut down all the garbage bags! Shut down the detection level! Oh, shut them down! Shut them all down! They're dying! Oh, to Uti Waka Luko Solo, Utu Jabba Waka! I'm afraid the Death Star will be quite operational when your friends arrive. <laughs> oh, the force is strong on this one, eh? <laughs> Guys, what are you doing? This is our gig. What are you doing here? Hey, you're on our turf now, funny boy. Hey, where'd you get the cool electronic fart machine? We have a permit for that. Well, you guys knock yourselves out with your little fart machine, jerks. Who's he? I don't know. And the other guy. What other guy? night for an evening. When it snows and men like to write their name in the snow with the uh, thing, you know, right? Am I the only one that does this? Hello, men. Right, right. It snows and men write their name in the thing. I'm not getting gross, right? Well, men can do it and women can't do it. I don't, I know, I don't think that's fair. So for women, I made this form. It's an invention. It's a stencil. Lay it down in the snow and they can write their name. <laughs> I got a call in the hotel I, uh, from the airport. Steve Wright, yes? Is your mind wandering? <laughs> yes, it is. How did you know? Well, it's showing up on radar out here. <laughs> you think you could think about something? Because we're getting a lot of traffic in the area. Go to the airport and check these as your bags. <laughs> I know, and after about 20 minutes or so, you're just like, oh, for God's sake, what the hell? I called the wrong number today. I said, hello, is Joey there? The woman answered, she said, yes, he is. I said, can I speak to him, please? She said, no, he can't talk right now. He's only two months old. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll wait. Pick up hitchhikers dressed like the craft dummy. <laughs> <laughs> right, that way the guy gets in the car, go, put your seatbelt on, I'm going to try something cool. Hey, what the hell? Doesn't matter what temperature a room is, it's always room temperature. <laughs> Look, the toilet seat I invented for people that sit for a long time so you don't get tired. I wear eyeglasses during the day. Yesterday I was walking down the street wearing my eyeglasses and all of a sudden the prescription ran out. <laughs> You think you look like an idiot. Check it out. It's the damn hand Wendy's hamburger girl. I've been watching the Roadrunner cartoon for 25 years. I mean, he's been chasing him 25 years. I'd like to see him finally get right up to him and go, sorry, I thought you were someone else. This is fun, too. Drive around with these things hanging out of your gas tank in your car. <laughs> I know. People don't know. They're like, you got my money! Full serve with that one hanging out of your game. <laughs> Everywhere you go, all over the world, everyone you meet is different. So let's make fun of them. Let's make fun of them. Let's make fun of all the people in the world. Ha <laughs> ha! I would like to settle your minds concerning this ridiculous notion that Germans are um, ob <laughs> obsessed with mathematical uniformity. <laughs> this is a total fabrication. Now, 
Joke number one. The United Nations Security Council asked me here on a comedy cultural exchange program. Uh, well, it's true. Tonight I am here. Carrot Top is doing Kabul. He's doing very well. He's doing very well. He was executed after five minutes, I'm sorry to say. Official reason, props and ginger hair, too irritating. But um, I just started traveling recently, man, last three years. I never left the East Coast until three years ago. So, you know, I, it's, I know, I know countries. I know you don't like, I know you don't like, you know. I know you don't like America. I know, I know. <laughs> and I didn't know why until I started traveling. I, we're, we're arrogant. We, you know, we don't know the name of your, of your president, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you how arrogant I was. I, I used to. I, I was so arrogant. I refer to people in their own country as foreigners. When I'm <laughs> when I'm visiting you, I act like you're visiting me. I, what the? When are you foreigners gonna learn how to cook a steak? What is this language you're speaking here in Japan? Yep, in English means yes. In Russian means sex. I'm not making this up. I'm arriving to America. I'm just going, yep, 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 yep. I said to myself, what a country. I come from the very Italian house. The plastic furniture you couldn't sit on house. Did anybody have the museum house? Oh, towels you could never touch. China that no one's ever going to use. Everything in this house is for a special occasion that hasn't happened yet. My mother's waiting for the Pope to show up for dinner one night with Sinatra. I have a school for Italians. I have a school where I actually teach Italians how to be more Italian. I teach them all the fine points of Italian acting. I teach them how to crank up their ass, how to pick themselves up, how to say all the catch Italian phrases. Forget about it, definitely. You know what I mean? Yo, who died and left you, boss? It's just always the same crap. Oh, Jews are so cheap. I hate that. You know why? Because I'm East Indian. We could out-cheap you any day of the week, man. I saw an Indian guy trying to bargain his way into the theater tonight, man. He was at the box office. How much to get in? How much? Wow. That's a lot of money. I tell you what. I've got this goat. There's a sign in Queensland. Queensland's up the north of Australia. In Queensland, it's known for people being a bit slow and stupid. That's where I come from. There's a sign up there that says, Koalas cross from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. That's pretty precise for a koala. Oh. There's a phenomenon called Irish hair. You can walk into a bar and see 400 people and, and they all look like this. How's it going? I thought I would come in a kind of national costume. This is... Um, a little outfit is a memento from the Iran-Iraq chemical warfare from... Uh... <laughs> Please keep the laughter coming, it helps with my asylum application that's going through. Now... And really there are two things I just can't stand about South Africa. Apartheid and the blacks. <laughs> I don't write any of my own material. The South African government writes me all my material. <laughs> My mom's from Mexico, my dad's from Central America, all right? I was born in Central America too, Nebraska. <laughs> so like I travel, right? And, and it like sucks traveling in America. Of course, wherever I go, especially like, let's say anywhere in Texas, it doesn't matter what I tell people, I'm Mexican. <laughs> Your name is Carlos, you're a Mexican. <laughs> You know what I mean? No, oh, he can't go, hey, I thought you were funny, man. Where'd you say you were born? I could say anything, anything. Paraguay, Uruguay, Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina, Colombia, Nicaragua, Honduras. This guy look at me right in the face and go, what part of Mexico is that? 
Is that near Cancun or something, boy? Es tu pelo, son tus pesos, mi estremezco, oh, oh, oh. Was hab den Schlafen unter Straußen? It happens to everybody, we all get old. Things that used to work just don't. Things that once were warm get cold. Things that once were hard get soft. Things that once were smooth get hairy. Oh, getting old can be scary. I called my grandmother yesterday. She picks up the phone. Oh, hello, dear. Hold on a second. I just stepped out of the shower. Let me go put some clothes on. I said, hey, Grandma, don't ever tell me you're naked again. <laughs> Go put a lot of clothes on. Then put some more clothes on. I'm going to sit here and drink and try to forget you naked in my head. You get to a certain age, you really got to be wearing a shirt at all times. Okay? Now, I didn't look too bad either 20 years ago, nothing but a pair of gym shorts and some running shoes. But even I'm giving the neighbors a break. A lot of us have breasts that's scaring the kids and confusing the babies. You know, things change as you get older. I mean, it used to be, we're going to shake, rattle, and roll. Now my hands shake, my pills rattle, and my belly rolls. I mean, I'm not the man I used to be. I used to trip on acid. Now I trip on carpets. You two have been married, what, 46 years? That's right. Do you remember the happiest moment of your life? Yeah, it was 47 years ago. They just took a poll from Washington and they found out that men who are married 30 or 40 years live longer than, than single men of, of the same age. But the married men are willing to die sooner. When a man turns 50, he can get the blues Just from bending down to tie his shoes He's thinking, oh dear, oh dear Is there anything else that I should get while I'm down here? Walter, do you think about getting old? I don't worry about it. I figure I want to go like my uncle did. How is that? Peacefully and in his sleep. Unlike the passengers in his car. <laughs> People must be mumbling, he can't hear a word, and his eyesight is perfect, so his friends must be blurred. He still plays hockey, he still plays to win, but contact hockey means you keep your lenses in. And at our age, going to the washroom is like going to a fireworks display. <laughs> you stand there wondering if it's ever going to start. Then when it does get going, there's a lot of oohs and ahs. And you're never completely sure when it's over. Middle age is what they call it. He's no longer indestructible. The bulge in his pants is his wallet. And everything he does is deductible. Men say, I'm going to get old gracefully. How do you do that? You lose your hair, your teeth, you're red, you get fat, you're attracted to beige clothes. <laughs> you look like a red snowman in a beige jumpsuit. If you're, a, if you're a woman, it's not any easier either because you get to a certain age, maybe you're not quite so attractive as you once were before, perhaps, maybe, I'm just suggesting, what do I know? And then <laughs> you're not so interested in sex or being alive, and then Mother Nature comes along and thinks, what can I do to improve the quality of this woman's life? What is it she needs? What's that magic thing I can give her? What does she want? What can I do? What, what the, how can I give her some vim, some get up and go? How, what, what, I know a beard. <laughs> so I went to see the Rolling Stones. And uh, this is how you can tell you're getting old. Well, first, you went to see the Rolling Stones. <laughs> but they had this amazing effect for the song Brown Sugar, where they blasted all this confetti dust into the air, right? Filled the entire sky, and was like a billion little reflective particles. And my first thought was, cool. <laughs> my second thought was, this can't be good for your lungs. <laughs> and here's how you know you're getting old. My third thought was, Who's going to clean this up?
They share the world with us. They come in all shapes and sizes. They're furry and they're friendly. And they always seem to surprise us. Especially when we step in their poop. My dog, uh, he, it was my birthday and he, he ate the garbage. Because I guess there was cake in there and it seemed tastier than normal garbage. And uh, so about four in the morning, he got uh, what I guess you'd call scientifically uh, uh, explosive diarrhea. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's four in the morning and you're just lying in bed and you just, and it's, and you know it's, and it's everywhere. <laughs> and then I heard this sound and it was sound, it was very interesting because I'd never heard it uh, following explosive diarrhea before. Uh, but it, uh, it went like this. Yeah, all right, yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. Although, I gotta say this, for a second, lying in bed, I was like, oh good, I don't have to get up. You know what I mean? But we had our dog muted, we had all these kind of bits taken away, it was so sad. You can't even take it down the veterinarian, and you put it on the table, and you go, good boy, and the dog's like, I, I'm all, I'm all, yes, you're a good boy. And he's put to sleep, and he goes, this is nice, this is lovely, nice. He wakes up like an hour later, I'm like, oh, that was a nice, good boy. Where's my balls? Where's my balls? <laughs> That's my theory. That's why dogs chase balls. <laughs> but about 20 minutes later, I hear this other sound uh, that goes something like this. <laughs> Followed immediately by... for three hours. And I realized something. My dog has no short-term memory. None. Literally, this is what's going on in his head. It's, ugh, I am so sick. Oh my God, food. She bought a rat for the kids. A rat, a rat, as a pet. Do you hear what I'm saying? A rat. I said, why would, you, why would you buy a rat? And this is what she said to me. She goes, it was only $6. <laughs> and I'm thinking, is there not one <laughs> sale you can pass up? $6 <laughs> for a rat? Wait, wait, wait. So then she calls me. She goes, I'm at the vet. And I'm thinking, we have a dog. I'm thinking, something wrong with a dog? And she goes, no, there's something wrong with the dog? She goes, no, the rat. She took the rat to a vet. She took a $6 <laughs> rat to a vet. For $6, if it's broken, don't fix it, get a new one. She took it to the vet. Wait, she says, I'm here with the rat. I'm here with the rat. Guess what, Howie? The rat, the doctor says, the rat has cancer. I'm thinking, oh my God, what kind of experiment were we conducting where it's going to be written that living with the Mandels causes cancer in laboratory rats? I had a dog wake me up last night barking from across the street at 3 o'clock in the morning. What the hell are they doing? I think they must just go out on the porch and just go, hey, hey it's nice and quiet. <laughs> Why don't I bark it up for no reason whatsoever? <laughs> and right when you think they're done. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? I'm a dog. Just barking. Wouldn't that be weird if people were like that? For no reason, you know. Some guy goes out on his porch at three in the morning. Nobody knows him, just goes out there, you know. Hey! 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 Hey, you all right, man? Hey! 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 And I should have known that the rat had cancer, okay? The rat, we should have known because my kids, I uh, named the rat <laughs> Lumpy. So we should have, I should have had an inkling that it had. And, and, uh, but they operated on Lumpy, and Lumpy is now at home in Los Angeles. The vet called me and said, Howie, uh, don't worry, he'll be, Lumpy will be okay. Make sure he gets plenty of rest. And I'm thinking, how do I curb the schedule of a sick rat? No, no, uh, Lumpy, hey, 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 don't get up. Don't get up, look at you, you're sick, I'll, I'll do the wheel. Let me do the wheel. <laughs> look at you, you're sick. You 
won't believe your eyes People flying through the skies Jugglers, freaks and guys Who exchange their clothing and juggle You won't believe it The wildest sights You can't see these are live goldfish. They're not pieces of moving carrots. Bonsoir. Let's bring up number two. Now he's gone to sleep. Let's shove down the light bulb, give him a hit in the head, and push him up. I want to take my clothes off and run around. This prevents streaking. Sex, dirty, dirty sex, sexy, sexy sex, dirty, filthy, filthy, dirty sex is next. Just that women have more patience than men. That's why after a guy has sex, we don't want to talk. Women, you know, hey, my wife, you never talk to me after sex. Why well, talk to you before sex? That's why I talk to you. To get sex, my plan worked. <laughs> why should I keep talking? The runners keep running once they cross the finish line? No! Wouldn't it be great to think about this for a second? If our bodies were designed, so instead of bad things, good things could be transmitted through sex? Like skills? <laughs> Baby, I'm gonna do you till you're an architect. My goddaughter is um, two and a half years old. She saw her father in the shower. She came running out screaming, Mommy, Daddy has a tail. <laughs> of course, I'm the evil single girl. I had to ask, is it a big tail? A couple of months ago, I had an operation. Uh, now, it was nothing too serious, but it did involve me having my genital area shaved. <laughs> you know how it is. And I was a bit nervous about this at first. But to be honest, I've been doing it ever since. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know yourselves, once you start shaving an area, you just can't stop. You know, it grows wildly out of control. Uh, I'm standing up here at the moment, it feels like I've got Don King's head in my underpants, you know? My wife said that to me the other night, our eighth wedding anniversary. You know, you've never told me about your sexual fantasies. And I said, well, that's because you're not in any of them. Younger guys, you know, they serve a certain purpose. They could do it all night. 
They have no idea what they're doing, but they could do it on it. Every time I see an 18-year-old boy, I'm like, mmm, breakfast, yay. <laughs> they look like Pop-Tarts to me, do you know what I mean? Just a little snacky poo for mommy till a grown-up comes along, come on. Women don't like nice guys. Say they do, don't. They got to have an asshole first. Every woman goes through an asshole phase. They gotta go up with Ike, then Mike. That's right. And you know what's bad? If you're a nice guy like me, you always get women after they've been out with an asshole. So now you gotta be their boyfriend and their psychiatrist to help them get over this psycho. That's right. For every 20 minutes of pussy, three hours of therapy. I worked at a gas station. The guy I worked with was a strange man, former porno movie star from the 70s. He'd get confused every time he'd fill the tank. Halfway through, he'd pull it out and spray it all over the car. You don't get hookers in a small town. Just it wouldn't work, you know? Small town hooker. You know, she'd be out in the curb there. Uh, hey, big boy, you want a date? No? All right, well, say hi to Sheila for me. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, here to buy some lingerie. And what are you looking for in particular? <laughs> well, you know, in particular. <laughs> and then you get to talk dirty. You know, I'm looking for, uh, black lace bronze and matching panties. <laughs> and, uh, what size is she? Then you lie. Oh, size, oh, oh, oh I forgot. Because then she says, oh, well, you forgot, Fifi, you forgot. Well, is she like... Fifi or myself? <laughs> then you get to look. Oh, uh, gee, I don't know. Uh... Kind of like you on top, Fifi on the bottom, right? And then she walks over to the little panty rack where the little panties are hanging on the little panty hangers <laughs> that the little panty fairies have been up all night making. She takes her hand, I love this, she takes her fingers, I love this, and she just, she put her fingers in the crotch and rub it to show you how sheer <laughs> You know when she touches it, you're buying, you know, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 the ones you touched, yeah. I don't, I don't care what size they are, just put them on my head, I'll wear them out of the store. Well, I only smoke when I'm drinking, but I find I'm drinking all the time. Well, I only smoke when I'm drinking, but I find I'm drinking all the time. Well, in a perfect world, I'll tell you, little girl, to be cigarette-flavored wine. Hey, stomach, what's up, man? Listen, it's just us beer, you know? Looking for a little party, hang out, you know? <laughs> now, you know everyone, you know Coors Light, Sam Adams, Bex. Oh, hello, he's crazy, man. <laughs> He's nuts, man. You know Heineken, you know. And your stomach's cool with that. All right, come on in. Just keep it down, all of you, understand? It's a bad thing. Everybody knows it's a bad thing. I mean, I know I'm going to give up. If I thought I wasn't, I'd quit now. But it's, it's just that it's the wrong time for me because I'm still technically alive. Next thing you know, a couple of scotches show up. How are you, stomach? Could you got a great party going on in here? Well, they cut his in some big pipers. What do you say? Stomach, I don't know. Come on, show them that. If you never saw a drive through liquor store, it's what it is. It's a big ass liquor store, right? Big. With the window on the side, where you can drive up and buy beer, whiskey, whatever you want, while you're driving. <laughs> Great idea, huh? Just a thing for that drunk driver who's constantly on the go. Now everyone's showing up. Jägermeisters and Sambuca, Saki. Oh, how'd that party here tonight? Everybody's very worried about drinking, you know? But the fact is, if you go out tonight and get completely blitzed, you measure what a good time you had by how much it messes you up. <laughs> if you met, meet somebody tomorrow and they'll say, how was it last night? You'll go, it was fantastic. I can't see. <laughs> I have no feeling on the right side of my body. You should have come, you'd have at least lost an eye. Everything's getting out of control, your stomach. Hey, hey, come on, guys, I'm not gonna tell you again. Keep it down. I've had it up to here now. Oh, 
my doctor tried to scare me out of smoking my doc. You know, show me a picture, a smoker's lung. Oh, it was gross and disgusting. Then he showed me a picture, it was a healthy guy's lung. Oh, it was gross and disgusting. Tequila doesn't show up alone. There's always eight or nine of them lined up. <laughs> Stomach gets all brave. How you doing, Tequila? Listen, listen, all right? It's a little late. Can't let you in tonight, I'm sorry. You know, besides, I let you in three weeks ago, you ruined the place, you hear me? <laughs> the kid was like, come on, man, we won't start no trouble, man. And there's no smoking in America in Dunkin' Donuts. I'm pretty goddamn sure that coffee was invented by guys that were sitting in a room smoking and wanted to stay up late and smoke more. <laughs> like an idiot, your stomach lets in one shot of tequila. And then he sneaks in all his friends when no one's looking. Come on, man, ain't nobody looking. Go to the legs, go get the one. We're gonna go get the bone. Your stomach, all right, that's it. Everyone, get up. God must have a sense of humor. Think of all the jokes he'd tell. At least I hope he has a sense of humor, or all these next folks are going to hell. Oh, hell. Now, you're all here for eternity, uh, which I hardly need tell you is a hell of a long time. Um, so you'll all get to know each other pretty well by the end. OK, let's split you up then. Uh, murderers. Over here, please. Thank you. <laughs> Looters and pillagers over here. Thieves, if you could join them. And bank managers. You're in that lot. <laughs> Go down there if you see them. They even say to me, does God only love Catholics? Well, that's not true. God loves Protestants and Jews and Anglicans. He loves them all. He prefers the Catholics. <laughs> He was a kid at family parties. Mary would say, come along, Jesus, do one of your miracles for the guests. <laughs> oh, Mum, I don't want to. Come along. Auntie Ruth hasn't seen you watering to wine. Oh, Mum, can I show her my Ninja Turtle suit? No, you can't show her your Ninja Turtle suit. And tidy your room. It's full of lepers. God, Muhammad and Buddha. Imagine God as a kind of a Jewish lawyer who turned Catholic around the same time Bob Dylan went electric. <laughs> Muhammad is a really grumpy guy who nobody trusts because he makes all his women dress up like assassins. <laughs> and Buddha is a fat little guy who sits around all day farting, eating grapes. Atheists. Atheists, over here, please. You must be feeling a right bunch of nitwits. <laughs> Dear God, having recently read your engaging collection of short stories, You've read them too, have you? It's a lovely little book, the Bible. He dies in the end, by the way. <laughs> Probably spoiled it for all you Protestants. I don't understand Easter when you think what it's about. Well, we stuck a guy on a cross. Let's have some chocolate. <laughs> People say, how can you believe in all that Adam and Eve rubbish? No one can believe in that. Why not? What did Adam and Eve do? It's straightforward stuff, isn't it? They stole some fruit. They spoke to a snake, they suddenly realised they were naked. You know, we've all had nights like that, haven't we? I like God. I think he just must get bored listening to Christians 24 hours a day in a million different languages. <laughs> He's trying to run the universe up there. He's up there thinking, I shall move this star so the light bounces off the hemisphere of the planet and sends a cascading rainbow of spectrum colors across the universe for all to see. And then I... What? <laughs> no, really, enjoy your meal, don't mention it. And finally, uh, Christians. Christians? Ah, yes, I'm sorry, I'm afraid the Jews were right. <laughs> Every 
religion's got these bizarre rules you've got to follow dogmatically. Catholics have the toughest. Don't masturbate. <laughs> How'd you find out about that? I'm God, I'm everywhere, don't masturbate. Damn. What about pork? Yeah, go ahead, have a sandwich. Catholics, they can eat the pork, they just can't play with it. That's where they draw the line. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the night. Take care. Isn't it funny how time flies by while you're making people laugh? It almost makes you cry. Just for laughs is turning 20 years old today. 20 years of laughter, we just won't go away. Come follow me and sing it right out loud. Just for laughs is 20 years old and we're proud. We started in the business back in 1983. We didn't have a clue how big this thing would be. We had all your favorite comics back before they were big stars. Seinfeld, Ray Romano, Adam Sandler, Roseanne Barr. Just for laughs is turning 20 years old today. 20 years Years of laughter, we just won't go away. From the city of Montreal, where guys like us still draw crowds. Just for laughs, it's 20 years old and we're proud. Yeah. Our musical journey is at an end. Thanks for watching the 20th anniversary tribute to Just for Laughs. And we'll see you again in another 20 years. Or sooner, if you live near me. Oh. All the best in stand up. All the comedy peaks. And just to be fair, we added our share of jugglers, minds, and freaks. So just for laughs is turning. 20 years old today. 20 years of laughter, we just won't go away. It's partly luck, it's partly skill that's got us all this far. Just for laughs, it's comedy that's the star. It's the 20th anniversary of Just for Laughs. Just for laughs is turning 20 years old today When I first worked